So then if we come to Kubernetes as an example, I'll just show you the compose file and then we'll pause for a second. So I come into a Kubernetes cluster. I have created a namespace called GitOps demo. It's there's no quota, it's just just a, a vanilla namespace. Now I can do the same thing. I can say applications, create for manifest. I'll put it in my, my namespace. This one's going to be demo three. Uh, git URL, put in the same thing. Refs heads. This time it's kube slash compose.yaml. Now I need to make sure because I always do this. In this case, because it's compose and not a manifest, you have to click the compose format. And now we know to use the compose library inside Portainer. Again, authentication, uh, authenticate, automatic updates, because that's what we want to do. And we can go deploy. That is then going to read the compose with a C file, create me two different deployments. And again, if I come back into here and go into kube compose, I had, again, you wouldn't do things like this. This is just simplistic purposes for now. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm a bad developer. I have a simple Docker compose file that is basically having a MySQL server and a WordPress server. You cannot just use a raw compose file and expect it to work perfectly in, in Kubernetes. You have to have these compose labels. Now, there is a whole bunch of compose labels you can add to enrich a compose with a C file so that it works properly on Kubernetes. So as you can see here, this, this here would simply be exposing port 80 and port 3306 on the cluster as, as cluster IP or node port. So what we want to do here is actually say, no, no, I want to expose externally as a load balancer. So I had to enrich the compose file with these, these compose labels to support this. So with that done here, you'll see here, once I refresh, uh, this is going to deploy both the database and the WordPress instance. They're both published. So if I come into WordPress, uh, this is DigitalOcean. So this will take a little while to get the load balance provisioned, but you'll see here it is configured. It's up and running. WordPress is running. Uh, I'm waiting for the load balancer. Um, but once that comes up, we can click it. But this is basically deploying and you see what the waiting's here. It's still waiting for the load balancer. So we have to wait, uh, but this is this is basically gone and deployed the application, the compose file with a C against Kubernetes, uh, and is pushing this up perfectly fine. Now there's a whole bunch of limitations. Half of the half of the 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 uh, compose uh, spec compose with a C is not available and compose with a K. So. It's kind of useful, but would I use it in production? Maybe not so much. For a developer, it's probably okay. Uh, but for me, if I, if I was running a proper Kubernetes environment, uh, there are actually, uh, Docker Desktop especially, has a compose to manifest conversion tool. You can actually run it through a conversion tool. Uh, that's probably how I would approach it. Um, but yeah, uh, so secrets management with, with compose with a K, not its best work. So in, in that case, you, you'd have to pre-create the secret and then reference that. Um, much like volumes, if you if you want to use persistence, so if you, if you were using a compose file and you were used to having vo the, the volumes command, uh, yes, recording will be available. Um, if, if you're using the, the, the compose command with, with volumes defined, those will not work against, against Kubernetes you have to have pre-created the volumes because all, it, all it's doing from a compose is a claim. It's not actually creating the volume. So this, there's a lot of workarounds in there. So you, you need to have, have, have a read up on compose with the K limitations if you're seriously going to use that.